Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever and whenever you're listening to this. Welcome, welcome to today's session of the BitX Town Hall. And let me quickly also enable the screen for the people here to view to this. It's lovely, we are sitting here at the Town Hall number 17. It is insane how quickly things are going and how quick the time is passing. But today we do have a couple of topics that we want to talk about and hopefully somebody of you in the audience is willing to ask any questions because usually for everybody that is new in here and I do see a couple of people that are in here that I've never seen before, these town halls are for you. So whenever you do have any sort of question or something is unclear for you you can always raise your hand and i will bring you up to the stage be aware that town halls are recorded and uploaded to all these podcast platforms later on so if you don't want your voice to be online somewhere in the web just don't come up but we do have a chat to the left on the town hall you can open up the chat and ask any questions in there because town halls are usually for the people and other than that, I only have a couple of news that I want to share with you and a couple of topics that I do think are necessary to talk about. And let me quickly go over what kind of topics we do have here today. So the first one is that I want to talk with you a little bit about the BitX Gamma. And hopefully I do see Scott in the audience that he is willing to come up on stage and talk with me about this. I also do see a couple other people. So Rapesalot is in here. Hey, lovely to have you, buddy. Uh, yeah, but let's move forward. Other than that, um, so we will talk about the BitX Gamma because plenty of you people are probably interested in this. And uh, yeah, hey, yo, Scott to you, Beck. Uh, another topic that we need to talk about and that is really important is the release of the firmware 2.1.9, which did had a bug in there. And I want to address and explain what was the bug and how we are currently trying to resolve this bug and what you will hopefully receive in the next two to three days, um, approximately, hopefully, so that we uh, can give you something new so that you guys can update without any issues. And last but not least, uh, I want to talk about public pool and the current rise of the hash rate that we do see on public pool there. Scott, are you willing to come up on stage? Hey, buddy. Hey, what's up, everyone? Lovely to have you here. All righty. Good um, to be here. Thanks for putting on another fantastic town hall. Yeah, we're sitting at town hall number 17. How insane is that? 17. Wow. 17, yeah. Time flies. That, that is really insane. I mean, yeah, time flies. All right, um, I teased to the people that we want to talk or that I wanted to talk about the BitX Gamma, which is the name for the next iteration of BitX, which will use the newest chip that is out there from Bitmain. Would you mind sharing a little bit of insights uh, about the current process that you had with the BitX Gamma and the development kit that you do have there? Like, have you faced any sort of issues? What, what's going on in general with it? Yeah, yeah. The So, like you said, the BitX Gamma is the next uh, major revision of the BitX here. We have sort of these code names for each major revision. Started with, uh, well, the first revision. So the second major BitX was the BitX Max. Then we had the BitX Ultra. Then we had the BitX Supra. And now the BitX Gamma. These, uh, there's also version numbers that go along with them. And so the Gamma is the 600 series. Uh, that's the hardware version number. So uh, BitX Gamma 600 has been built. Um, ben uh, helped put it together uh, a couple of these boards. And this is with the chip from the Antminer, from the Bitmain Antminer S21 Pro that was announced at the beginning of the year and just started shipping um, just a little over a month ago, I think. Uh, it was right at, um, at Mining Disrupt that uh, they started shipping it. And I see we got Avril from Altair in the crowd. Huge thanks to Avril. He was able to get me one of these hash boards like right away uh, so we could start hacking on this. Um, <laughs> While I had COVID, uh, 
he got me one and I started banging on it. Um, and the cool thing is it, it, it's, it's working. Uh, it's not totally finished. There's a couple, uh, things. Yeah. Avril, happy to help. Dude, that guy is a legend. If you need any mining gear, definitely go check out altairtech.io. Got all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, and Avril who runs it is a, a legend in the space. So huge the, thanks to you, buddy. Yeah. Before we move forward with uh, any other talks, a quick explanation to everybody who is tuning in later on and listening to this recorded town hall. You can find the OSMU, the Open Source Miners United Discord, which is our primary source of communication under discord.gg slash OSMU. Sorry for interrupting. Let's keep going. Yes, right, right. We're recording this, so people might be listening later. So yeah, this is all part of OSMU put together by our, our amazing host, Want Clue. Um, but yes, so this this is a cool thing. The the S21 Pro is is kind of a big departure from the um from the ASICs that we've had in the previous miners, like the S21. It's actually quite a bit different than the S21. Uh, each chip has has a nominal hash rate of uh, over one terahash, which is pretty amazing. Uh, before we've been at nominal hash rates of like 750 gigahash. So potential is here for a fantastic bid axe. Um, like I said, with uh, with Avril's help, uh, we got you know got a hash board. Was able to reverse engineer the parts uh, measurements footprints. Uh, get a new board made called the Bitax Gamma 600 series. Got it put together. I've got one on my desk here, um, and it it seems to be working. Uh, you know, first tests like it didn't catch on fire, which is a huge bonus. Um, and in fact, it, it with a little bit of tweaking to the firmware, it started mining. We are not uh, at a point yet where it's like we can just ship it because um, it it. Uh, it still needs some more firmware work. There's there's a couple of changes to uh, some of the registers on this chip. This is the BM1370 chip, by the way. Uh, there appears to be some changes specifically around how the temperature measurement works. So a couple of things in there that need to be uh, sorted out. But yeah, rest assured, the Bidax Gamma is coming and it, it's going to be a big boost in hash rate. So it's pretty exciting. All right. Um, would you mind sharing with us a little bit uh, about? Oh, hey Ben. Ben is also on the stage. Hey. Good to have you. Yeah, here. sorry I couldn't uh, join a earlier. Things have been real hectic. Uh, uh, just one thing I wanted to add to that is is that we don't have it. It is hashing, but not at the uh, at, like the maximum rate right now. They were still like I think two hundred gig hash short of where it could be. Or at least that's what I found. For some reason yeah. it's not taking those hard blocks. Yeah, yeah. There's a little bit of tweaking. I mean, this is the process that happens with uh, with all of these bit axes so far. Is that you know because we don't have any data sheets or anything, we have to kind of poke around at it a little bit and see see what's changed, what's different, uh, what registers have what effect. I mean, to be honest, we don't we don't fully understand all the registers even in the chips going back. So there's a little bit of guess and check going on there. Um, you has know, we, anything, we have a has anything changed about the chip itself like do we have seen any new pins on there like more pins less pins something like that or the size of the chip has this been changed the chip is one millimeter wider so now it's actually um i think it's a square now and it's one millimeter wider than it was before so same number of pins physically bigger chip um I, we don't have any way to tell exactly what pins are what other than just looking at a hash board and guessing mm -hmm. from from what I can tell from the S21 Pro hash board, there doesn't seem to be uh, any big changes. And I, I, you know, the schematic for the Bidax Gamma looks very, very similar to the schematic for the Bidax Supra. But good. you know, um, one thing that's that's not working in the on the on the Supra, one of the things we like to do is use the uh, the A6 onboard temperature sense diode to measure the temperature of like the chip directly. Um, that was that feature was missing in the 1366 that's in the Ultra, and they Bitman added it back in the 1368. 
this part of the Supra. And it really, like I said, the, the pins and the pin out of the 1370 and the S21 Pro, uh, it didn't look like it changed, but the onboard temperature sensing diodes do not appear to be working. Um, so we have a little bit more. From the 68 ones, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's hooked up just like that, and it doesn't seem to be working, which is kind of breaking my brain. It, there's a couple of things that led me to believe that uh, that was included. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's not working, but we'll figure it out. I basically took a little bit of a break from development on this while I went to Nashville for the, the Bitcoin conference and um, you know, uh, got that, to that's, that's do a, a good call. Do you mind quickly sharing with us a little bit about the Bitcoin conference? Because we never had you here on stage and talking about the Bitcoin conference. Maybe you want to quickly share a little bit about your experience with it. And then after that, we can dive into the questions in the chat. Yeah, sure, sure. It was, um, I mean, it was amazing. It was, it's a really, you know, it's a really big conference. Uh, a lot of people, I feel like I only got to actually see and talk with a small fraction of the number of people that I, I wanted to talk to. Um, I don't even think I saw Avril when I was there the whole time, even though he was probably posted up like a few hundred feet from where I was. But anyways, it was, it was mayhem. Um, Bidax, as I'm sure you all know, Bidax solved a block, uh, and that was on the first day of the conference. It was really wild. So, you know, a lot of people wanted to talk about that. It was really good vibes. Um, Solo Satoshi was there um, selling Bidaxes at uh, at a small sort of vendor booth that we had um, at the conference, selling tons of Bidaxes, um, and they sold out actually, like in the first day and a half. Um, as you might expect, once, once the word got out, which happened really quickly, the word got out that a Bidax solved a block, um, everyone and their mom was getting uh, Bidaxes, wanted to get a Bidax, which is, you know, it's super cool. I, we always knew that a Bidax would solve a block, but I did not uh, in a million years expect that it would solve it so soon. But, uh, you know, here we are. It's fantastic. It proves that the BIDX can solve a block. Um, you know, proves the firmware works, which is badass. Um, and it's made uh, one of our... Well, it's, it's made all BIDX manufacturers into very busy people. Uh, probably significantly so for Ben. Maybe he wants to talk about the increased demand. I don't know. Um, but I guess, yeah, if we're... Yeah. If we're just real quickly to wrap up the conference, it was it was really cool, like really good vibes all around. Tons of people, lots of interest in the Bidax. Um, I got to do, I was on two panels at the show. Um, one was about open source mining and one was about decentralized mining. Uh, and then I was on a panel at Bitcoin Park um, before at sort of a side event where we were talking again about decentralized mining. And one of the, the cool things is that the word is getting out there that mining is centralized and it's really cool to see people like they come into the conversation. Um, they come into the conversation and they're already like, they already know this is an issue, right? I don't have to like bring up the fact that mining is centralized uh, to them. They come into it knowing and they know this is a problem and, and want to like talk about how we can fix it. So. Hey, we got Altair Tech on stage. Hey buddy. Hey guys, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we yeah. can hear loud and clear. Cool, yeah, just uh, concurring with Scott. It was there's so many people there. I was looking for you, Scott, and I think you were on stage for for a part of it. So we just couldn't uh, run into each other. But uh, the really funny story is I was on assignment to help Gecko Science with their booth, and uh, uh, you know, in one of the 101 series, you've talked about how Bitax was insp inspired by Gecko Science. But we had people coming to ask if we sell Bidaxes there, right? Gecko Science obviously doesn't sell Bidax. But they're like, so is this just like one of those Bidaxes that just found a black? And it was just really funny because, <laughs> yeah, now people uh, talk about Bidaxes instead of Gecko Science. That's good. Well, I mean, it's a similar hash rate. I mean, right, they use, a, they use uh, one chip or a couple chips and uh, similar kind of vibe. So, yeah, it, it definitely shows it's possible. Yeah, the compacts, I believe, have solved the block in the past. Sorry, several, I believe. One or, at least one or two. Uh, I think there's at least one post of it, but they've been selling for five plus years now, so there's probably even more. 
Yeah, you never know. That's the good part about Bitcoin. If nobody's actually shilling their address, nobody would know that this is part of somebody's solo mining. Yeah, it, we don't know for sure that it was a bit axe that solved the block. We have a couple clues, um, and it really seems like it based on those clues, but there's no way to verify 100% that it was a bit axe. There's no way to verify who, to find out who it was unless someone like comes forward. But I don't know if I just got 3.125 Bitcoin, totally KYC. I, uh, well, I wouldn't be, I would have to tell everyone immediately. You, you but, mean totally KYC free? Yeah. I mean, they, they, they got totally KYC free Bitcoin. And so yeah. if they're smart, they don't tell anyone. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking about it as well. Sure, it would be cool to have somebody step up on front and telling, hey, I was the one and this uh, oh, this was my setup. Sure, that would be cool and a little bit of marketing uh, for the BDX community. But yeah, doxing yourself is probably not a good idea. So if everybody of you in the audience or who is listening to this later on thinks about getting a BDX and then chilling while you found a blog that you found a blog, probably not the best idea. Yeah. And I mean, it's not good to ever advertise that you have a lot of money, you know, a lot of Bitcoin, right? Like, why would you do that? It just opens you up to additional risk. So probably better to, uh, you know, stay humble and uh, stack sats, as uh, Odell would say. All right. Um, yeah. It's, it, okay. They, they, that's fantastic. Uh, so, I mean, there was plenty of news about the conference in Nashville and everything else. Uh, there is another conference that you're attending to very soon, right? Uh, which one is this? Yeah, in a couple of weeks, I'm going uh, to Latvia to the uh, Baltic Honey Badger uh, conference in Riga, Latvia, uh, to give a talk there on BitAx. I actually don't know what it's going to be about yet, but uh, it'll be amazing. If you're anywhere in that region, I've heard that that conference is phenomenal. So, uh, yeah, come check it out. It's, uh, August 24th and 25th in yeah, Riga, Latvia, weeks, which I've heard is a cool town. Yeah, that's, that's really exciting. That's really exciting. Uh, let's quickly dive through a couple of questions. Um, you, um, Jet Quill, whatever, uh, had a question about the BM1370. Does it use 32 pins? I mean, yeah, if the 68 does use 32 pins, then the 70 does as well. Oh my gosh, let me check real quick. I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, you, you check this really quick. And then there was also this question from Rail about the S31 XP. Did anybody in OZMU actually disassemble an S21 XP? Do we have anybody who did this? I'm not sure which kind of chip is on the XP. I don't think the S21 XP is shipping yet. Um, I'm not sure. You know, Avril would know about that, but I, I think I would have heard about it. I think that's uh, going to be later this year. Let's see. He's currently running in the chat, so maybe, maybe they are, <laughs> maybe they're not. Who knows? I just checked. Uh, the BM1370, like the BM1368, has 30 pins on the on the sides. You know, 15 and 15 on each side, and then it has the two power pins or pads below so yeah 32 pins total and um, by the way while i do see this here in the audience we do have developer algo in the audience huge shout out to you buddy for those of you who don't know him he was one of the earliest adopters of uh, building and selling bitx devices and uh, let's quickly bring him up on stage but it's good to have you and good to see you here in the audience Avril says S21 XP ships in quarter four. So yeah, stay tuned for that one. Thank you guys. How are you? How is everyone doing? I'm doing good. Doing good, man. Good to hear from you. How are things? Ah, uh, great. I've been taking some vacation time, so I'm back, uh, back to the fold again. He's back. <laughs> he is back. Nice. That's lovely. Good to have you here back again. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Yeah, developer algo was probably the first person to manufacture and sell a bit axe is that yeah. that's true right like that was yeah. the early days he was the, the early one who got me into it like he was the only <laughs> one who actually sold bit devices and i i do remember this the evening that i noticed about uh, that i actually got into bit and then was looking around he was the only source to actually get them 
so I instantly order one. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'm I'm really really glad for I mean for the group. I mean and uh, the original guys and the new guys who have come in and just kept on going so that that's really really encouraging for all of us and the new guys right because god got us going and we jumped into it you know just looking to make sure that something happened and and somehow a lot of uh, devs and a lot of just people who are interested in in crypto have joined in and and made it something worthwhile that's really encouraging That's awesome, man. Well, we definitely appreciate your work and good to have you back. Great. Thanks. All righty. Um, I, I, I think it's time to actually go over to a topic that is a little bit disappointing, which is the recent release. Wait, wait, did we want to have... Did, w- yeah. I think Ben was going to tell us about uh, I know, uh, an update on Bidax oh, I, manufacturing. I was, I was trying to catch on that later on. I'm not sure, Ben. Do you have a little bit oh, more time okay. to stay here on stage so that we can talk about this in like 10 minutes? Or do you need to go yeah. anytime soon? It's fine. All right. Lovely. Good. Because I wanted to dive into a section which is a little bit disappointing and where uh, Scott and I were banging our heads lately. Because um, a couple of days ago, I released the version 2.1.9 and we quickly figured out with a lot of answers and point out from you in the OSMU community that there is a major bug in the latest release. So we put it back to pre-release and then I decided to actually get rid of the release at all. So now we're back to 2.1.8 and it appears to be that Scott figured out a couple of memory leaks as well as I did a couple of, uh, found out about a couple of memory leaks, which caused the BitX to do weird stuff and uh, sometimes reboot, sometimes not even start to hash, which is also apparently another thing that happens. And uh, yeah, there, there were a couple of bugs that we figured out when we are currently, I don't know how many commits we did in the last couple of days, but it, it seems promising that we can actually bring out a new release and probably this will be the 2.1.10, uh, which should then be working. Uh, it's got Shall we talk a little bit about the bugs that we have figured out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, um, uh, Juan Clu, you know, he asked me about it and we, I was like, let's do it. Let's release this, right? We've had uh, a, a bunch of bug fixes and improvements and things that have just kind of been chilling in master for a long time. And I, I've wanted to get these released out there and it just, you know, been, been busy. So one clue is like, should we release this? And I'm like, yeah, I've, I've been running it here on a number of bit axes. And it's like, it, it looks good to me. So let's get it released. So he released uh, 219. Um, that went live on GitHub, which populates everyone's AxOS with the opportunity to download and install that, um, that firmware update, which turns out we have a lot of new bit axers recently. And a lot of people did this, like a lot of people installed this update right away, which is badass. Appreciate you guys. Um, and then people were, uh, you know, started sounding the alarm that there was a problem, uh, you know, here on discord and OSMU on Twitter. Uh, I know Juan Clue, you're a member of a bunch of other groups and people were like, yeah, something's up. Hmm. So, you know, we, uh, uh, Juan Clue and, you know, actually instigated, but, you know, I started, I jumped in too, as well as a bunch of other people in the, in the forum here, jumped in and were like, all right, let's, let's figure out what these problems are. We got to narrow this down. It's, it's really tough when people online are like tweeting, like, my bit X doesn't work at all. You know, what the hell? And you're like, okay, well, we need to fix this. What's, what's the actual, actual problem? So we, we cornered a bunch of people to get us, uh, more detailed logs and like, clear description about what's happening, what's causing this problem, how often it happens, things like that. And yeah, we dug in, there was, there's kind of a, a, a sinister problem that I identified that, um, if the network, if the, if the pool just sort of like stops sending shares, like if for some reason the pool gets disconnected, but the network is still up, um, after time, you know, this is over the course of like several hours, uh, the bid X will 
get into a state where it's not, it's not working on fresh work anymore because the pool isn't sending it fresh work. And then when the network comes back, it would actually um, flood the serial buffer and we would get into this state where it couldn't recover. So anyways, you know, the network goes down, network comes back up and uh, the bid acts could never recover. So I think we got that fixed or at least a bandaid on that. Uh, mm -hmm. There's still some, some probably bigger architectural issues that I think need to be addressed to fix that for good. But, you know, we've, we've got a more immediate fix uh, that should take care of that. And then uh, a number of people pointed out that we had a, a memory leak. And so this, this would cause your bid axe to uh, just crash and hopefully restart, you know, every two to like 20 hours, um, depending on the exact setup. So we had a memory leak and those, those kind of problems, all the rust people are like, you fools, you should switch to rust. It, you know, but <laughs> Uh, we're, we're based in C, so we have, we have memory leaks and, uh, they're tough to find because they can be slow and it's not always clear, you know, what part of the code is leaking the memory. So it is kind of a manual process of hunting through and trying things. And we have come out with a number of test firmwares that we post in the OSMU firmware channel, um, and a bunch of people, um, Oh, have, by the way, let me, uh, let me point this out for, for you guys. Uh, so you probably have also noticed that lately the firmware channel is getting a little bit more attraction and more people are writing in this because uh, we, we try to actually switch a little bit of the approach that we do take usually when we try to fix bugs or, or commit something new to GitHub. Instead of doing this, I don't know, somewhere uh, private, peer-to-peer -peer, or in an admin channel or anything like that, uh, we're trying to move this over to the firmware channel so that you guys can actually read with us what we are thinking of what we're adding. Um, it could be that we are not answering any of your questions because we are doing some coding here or trying to figure out any bugs or this memory leakage. So don't be upset about this, but usually we will now try to actually write in the firmware channel what we are currently doing so that we do have this sort of record and not only what's happening on GitHub. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, you know, we had a lot of new BitAx users recently, like a lot. And so a lot of people found OSMU and are asking for help, which is totally understandable. Um, so it's, you know, I definitely appreciate all the rest of the community members who have jumped in to offer help uh, for some of the common questions that people have. You know, the, the folks that have been here for a little bit longer know, kind of know, uh, have been following along and know what the current issues are and we're like helping people revert back to 218 if necessary. So that we could um, we could uh, work on on coming up with a fix as soon as possible. And let, let me quickly you know, these... point this out to the people. Maybe th someone in the audience does have two one nine working and is not capable of actually getting uh, back to two one eight. Or someone who is listening to this later on, if you do have a BitX device running on two one nine and it is causing you issues rebooting or anything else, just go over to one clue dot github.io slash bitx dash web dash flasher plug in it to your pc via usb and select the version of bitx that you do have click on install and you should be fine you need to process the setup process once again but then you should be back to 218 yes yes that's those those factory resets are pretty handy to do when you know stuff's not working you know, if you've d tried to do an update, you know, either forwards or backwards and it failed, like um, it's just got stalled on working and now your BitX isn't booting, uh, want clues, web flasher, those factory images are a great way to reset it. But like you said, you'll have to set up your Wi-Fi again and all that because it's a true like uh, reset. You should probably consider um, releasing some of these firmware versions like 2.1.8 as LTS versions that we know are kind of like the last really reliable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, should... that's a great idea. Yeah. We should definitely <laughs> consider 2.1.8 had some issues as well, but, you know, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll get there. But go, going, going forward on this, like also with 2.1.9, I actually uh, introduced the overheat mode, which would cause your bit as soon as it reaches a temperature of 75 degrees to actually shut down and change a variable to 
allocate that it is in an overheat mode. It would actually do a couple other things as well. Like it would basically disable your ASIC, but not on a level of the hardware. It would just change the frequency and the voltage addressed to your ASIC chip. So therefore then your bit would usually not really hash or on a really, really low hash rate, um, which I intended to do in a while loop. And I'm not trying to be too tech savvy here, but I did it in a stupid way and I quickly figured this out and really shout out to, I can't spell his name, but somebody was uh, pointing out to us a NVS, uh, so the non-volatile storage leakage, which could potentially be caused by this, not primarily, but for a small portion of it, which could be caused by this. Uh, so this got be f got also be fixed in one of the current versions that we do have on another branch on GitHub. But yeah, you, you do get the point, I believe. Like there are a couple of things that are now needed to be addressed. It is no longer just this version or this firmware of, all right, it needs some Wi-Fi, it needs some web UI, and then just one function to actually hash. It's so much more that we now do have on the BitX. And as Scott pointed out earlier, we're here in C and actually figuring out what is leaking memory is quite heavy. Yeah, there, I mean, there's been some interesting uh, upstarts to write a new version of the firmware in Rust. I know that uh, our members K1 and Nebula Miner and uh, TDS, uh, a couple people have talked about this. I think that that's a fantastic idea. Um, I, you know, we also have a lot of new bit actors, and so we got to have working firmware for them. So my goal at this point is to. Uh, keep keep the current ESP miner firmware working um, and and you know have it work uh, even better for everyone but uh, it, w it would be cool and I, I totally support these ideas to, to redo the firmware in rust that seems to be the new hot hotness in embedded programming so it will probably take a little bit of time to actually get it over to rust but um, I've talked yeah to it's a big project Lider. yeah I've talked it's to a real big Lider project and he He's trying to put some time in it, but you know, everybody of us is busy. This is uh, in quotes an open source project. So we're not working on this full time or getting a, uh, any paychecks for this. So we're doing this whenever we do have time, except for you, Scott. <laughs> but yeah, um, so it, it will take a little bit of time and things are not done by the end of the day. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Stay tuned. Um, and you know, anyone who, uh, wants to pitch in and help it's certainly much appreciated um you know dive in take a look at the code uh let us know what you think pull requests are always appreciated sometimes if it's a really big pull request it could take a long time to get reviewed because that's also a big job but um yeah if you, if you want to do a pull request i'd like to start off small um, rather than a really big one yeah, so as I pointed out or tried to point it out uh, earlier, this whole thing of having these bugs with 2.19 will be addressed. We will not release we will not release again the version 2.19, but we will have the version 2.110 hopefully very soon. We have ironed out as Scott said plenty of things and things looking promising. A little bit more testing give us I'd say like at least 48 hours of more testing. And if everything is stable, then we hopefully can see a new release, which does implement so many new things that are great for the BitX device. Yeah, I think we just got to figure out that um, that save button being grayed out. That's the only sort of outstanding issue, I think. And then, of course, just testing it on as many uh, uh, that, BitX as possible. That's a good thing to actually interact with the audience. Guys, does anybody of you here in the audience have a BitX 202? Please raise your hand or, I don't know, like write something in a chat. We, we need to you know what? Out. Someone someone uh, told me they had that problem happen on a 401. So what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we we can talk about this after, but uh, okay. That that guy, <laughs> he's not here, but he has a bunch of exclamation points in his name. Okay. He said it happened on his 401. Yeah, and Whale is also pointing out that there is some sort of duplication error going on with Swarm with the Swarm functionality. To be honest, oh, yeah, I'm not trying right. to be mean, yeah. but Swarm is this is a sidekick, and we don't actually do that much with Swarm. A couple of people are using it and it was great implemented by Ben, but the, the, currently we're trying to get everything that is 
on the main side of it going back and working. So the save button is probably one of the last things and then we can hit for the 2110. Yeah, the, the, should we talk about the, well, so there's been some talk about um, making a, a separate Bidax app, like maybe a web app or a standalone app, but basically uh, a sidekick app. And that, that would be kind of a more appropriate place to do things like Swarm. Um, it could also do like Firmware updates, maybe batch firmware updates, USB I mean, debugging. To, to be honest, uh, if this turns out to be great, we will probably get rid of Swarm at all in, in the BidX project. Yeah, it's a little. It's like Swarm is rad. Ben did a fantastic job with that. I I, uh, I like using it, but it is a little bit, um, a little bit. It's a little bit crowded. You know, the ESP32 that's running it on the uh, BidX has pretty limited resources, and it's kind of weird to have to use one bit access sort of the coordinator for monitoring all the rest yeah. of them right it would be cool to have an app even if it's a web app or something that you could you could do all this cool bit x stuff with uh well is writing in the chat that we should shouldn't get rid of swarm um i mean as scott pointed out it's a great feature of the bit x and axio xos but there's something in the making in the background. And as I said, if this turns out to be great, and this will be like some sort of a manage manageable app for all of your bid eggs in your home local network, and you don't even need to apply your own IP address, it will do everything automatically in the background, teaser, teaser. Um, then we will get rid of Swarm, only if this turns out to be great. But for now, Swarm will be implemented and still in, in bid eggs how it is currently. Yeah. 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 That duplicates is weird. Cause I feel like that just started happening, but anyways, I've we, we want to make sure we get rid of all the, the crashing, uh, freezing, resetting problems, memory yeah. leaks, stuff like that. Uh, so that we can, you know, cause there's a lot of really awesome features, uh, that are baked into two one nine, uh, that really would be great to get out there. So we just need to make sure that it's not, doesn't have any showstopper bugs included as well. Oh yeah, definitely. It's it's needed and we will get there. All right, um, I, I think with that we can move over to to the next section of today's town hall. And still, I I'd like to point out to everybody in the audience: if you do have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat or raise your hand. I'll bring you up on stage. And for everybody who's listening to this later on, on any of these podcast platforms, Discord.gg/osmu will bring you freedom and unity with lovely nerds on the internet. Check it out. All right. Um, I wanted I wanted to uh, to shout out to Solo Satoshi. Uh, they they showed up big time at the conference to to run the booth and uh, totally saved me. I was like visiting some family up until the conference and had like zero time to put this together. And uh, they were like, "Oh yeah, we got it. Don't worry." And so super appreciate you guys. Thanks for doing that. They put together an awesome booth. I think a lot of people came and learned about Bidax as a result of that. Uh, and some of those people were able to get one right there at the show. So yeah, it's, it's just for Shout out to Solo. audience. Do a little bit of hearts in the chat for Solo Satoshi. It's lovely to have you there, and lovely that you are guys with us. Alrighty, um, I, I think Ben. Now, now is uh, sort of your time to shine. Uh, let's talk a little bit of your pr about your production. What's going on? It seems like you're a little bit busy. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> um, yeah, ever, ever since uh, that BitX kind of block, and I've just gotten nuts. Um, I anticipate within the next probably couple months here, we'll probably like double the BitX fleet. And uh, I am currently working on scaling up even more. Uh, I think uh, these things being produced in the USA is awesome. Not just like some fab in China. So, uh, yeah, we'll see, but you know, I'd like to make a million of these someday. So what I so you, you've been scaling up your operations, right? Because you've been getting, you know, it seems like this bid axe thing is going to be a thing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I'm currently looking at the uh, purchasing like a like a bona fide like factory building, like a very large, you know, five thousand, ten thousand square foot range to to do nothing but produce bid axes. 
Oh insane. My God, that's amazing, <laughs> dude. Right on. That's right on. amazing. Yeah, so it's it's gonna be uh, you know kind of like a slow process. A lot of, like a lot of things in the in the works right now. Everything's in free fall, but hopefully, if I can be quick and catch everything, everything will just kind of like line up and click into place. And hopefully, by spring, we're just gonna be just crazy. So. I mean, the more the, the cool thing is the more of these things are produced, the more blocks we find, the, mm-hmm. the more interest we gather, the, the more decentralized things become. It's just like a big feedback loop. So this is just insane, right, guys? We we need to appreciate this, especially with everything else that Ben put together. Like public pool has been developed by Ben, and as well as this what's this called like affiliate reward for the highest share per month this kickback to the to the best share per month yeah i was just thinking you know how do you make a free pool better well you pay people back well how do you how do you get money in the first place a lot of people all these affiliate programs they keep all the money themselves i figure they can like recoup some costs because you know there are some costs related to running a internet servers memory that kind of thing um electricity so Mm -hmm. the highest share per month gets half of that i i get to keep the other half for uh pool maintenance and most recently as probably a lot of you 219 firmware people found out (laughs) is uh we went up we uh we upgraded our internet uh, which unfortunately has a lot of bid access to stop hashing, cool. but after they came back online, uh, we're, we're significantly uh, better connectivity. St- all the stales have dropped down to pretty ideal levels, I'd say, and um, we've still got a ton of headroom because public pool runs over a VPN to protect everyone's privacy, my privacy, your privacy, and the, the VPN now is the, the limiting factor. But, but still um, then, I mean, I, I'm taking a look on my three hours up on my hex that I do have here at uh, this prototype and only got like eight rejected shares, which is way better than before. Yeah, so unless we start seeing the, the share percent climb again, which may happen if we get enough devices online. I mean, the nerd the nerd miners, I mean, there's 50,000 of those things, right? So it would be like, as far as the pool is concerned, it would be like the same workload as, as serving like 50,000 like ant miners or like s19s or like whatever um so it's like a, it's quite a bit of workload and they're, they're only doing three giga hash but i'm going to continue to you know support them for as long as i can uh, it's also a really good test of the, the pool and its capabilities to see uh what it can do so it's awesome that's really awesome all right uh talking about public pool let's talk about uh, the current hash rate increase that we have seen, and not, I'm not talking about the the people who are throwing nice hash on public pool, but actually, guys, if you take a look on web dot public pool public dash pool dot io, we have surpassed a incredible number of hash rate coming from Bidex devices. We are now sitting at 1.1 peta hash coming from solely Bidex devices. We're sitting over 2,000 Bidex only running on public pool, which is insane. Yeah, and I'll say too, I mean, um, at least just from the bid access that I've produced, uh, you know, I'd say probably less than half people of half people use public pool as their primary as their primary pool. So there's a, there's a lot more bid access out there uh, CK doesn't know how many. He doesn't keep track of that. I've asked, and of course, there's people you, you know mining on the ocean and what, stuff. For what are you talking stats. about this? Do you have any rough number of how many bid eggs you produced since you started? Uh, it's hard to say because uh, it's climbing faster and faster. But uh, it's probably maybe roughly five thousand. Wow. Yeah. That's so rad. It's really insane. I mean, I, I can't, Scott, I I can't think enough about it. What will happen as soon as we reach your magic number of a million BitX devices? <laughs> oh, dude. Dude, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's solving a block every few days. Oh, yeah. Hope, hopefully yeah, I'd say, I mean, 
I'd imagine, uh, let's see, Deep Decentral here. I'm, I'm sure they've done several thousand themselves. Um, I mean, I think collectively we'll probably hit that 10,000 uh, before the end of the year. Maybe next year, by the end of next year, we'll, we'll do 100,000. Who knows? Yeah, I yeah, think we yeah. should be able to hit that pretty soon. Um, as Bitex, uh, I mean, as Ben is, is looking to ramp up, uh, the production. I'm also working on something on the back end. I've chatted with Ben on that and Scott probably for a few a few times on that. So hopefully, if everything goes well, uh, Ben ramps up and I get my side ramping up too. I think we should be able to hit that pretty soon. Yeah, it's awesome to have you know different manufacturers all over the over the country. Um, you know, for whatever reason, something happens to me, someone's got to either take over, right? So yeah. I don't want to, certainly don't want to be the only person to make great answers. Yeah, then we will be back in the circle of uh, centralization, right? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, what if Ben is faulty and implements some sort of virus on the bid eggs? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess the good part there is you can always just flash your own firmware, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's been it's, really great for OSMU as well. I mean, so uh, for those that don't know, uh, every every spell that I that I make, I donate five dollars to OSMU, and uh, we've got a we've pr got a pretty good little nest egg going. So, um, you know, I I'd like to start. Uh, doing more bounty programs, uh, paying people to uh, work on firmware, of sorts of software. I think it'd be really cool if we could uh, kind of get all the manufacturers together. And get, you know, they have been so like continuing to um, kind of fund the SMU as like a as a as a nonprofit. Not that we are, but it, we kind of run it that way. It'd be kind of it'd be nice to maybe get there someday as an actual nonprofit. Um, but uh, you know, I look at uh, places like HRF and OpenSAS, and they're doing they're doing some great work, and I think OSM you can do that too. I mean, yeah, sure. There was this sort of, I'd say, discussion that we do had internally about like, should we actually use OSMU and become some sort of a nonprofit organization? But I mean, still, a nonprofit organization would fall under certain regulations, and. OSMU is this decentralized hub in the internet that everybody could attend to and everybody could join in or leave however they like or build something completely new. What if out of nowhere you do have OSMU now switched over to some sort of a, as I said, an organization and then you fall onto certain regulations? Would It would make things harder. So the way how OSMU is run currently with a couple of us admins, a couple of moderators and you, the great audience and all of you members who are in OSMU, I think that's the way how we will stick to it and how we will continue doing this because that is the truly decentralized factor. I mean, I've, I've never seen Ben in my life, like in real life. I've never seen him and I don't need to because this is decentralization and the same goes with plenty of other people. I was mostly not, not meaning like OSMU, the organization, but more of o, uh, OSMU, the treasury. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, there's certain tax advantages you can get um, to that. For example, so for each, you know, I, I donate $5 for each unit. Well, I, I have to pay taxes on those, on that $5, right? Because that's, that's essentially a profit that I'm taking the, the, yeah. to, to do the donation. But if it was, if, if, uh, if it was a nonprofit, I could, you know, donate more because uh, those taxes wouldn't be taken out. So it's just a, it's more of just for the financial piece than, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's the organization. Yeah, it's a, it's a big lawyer activity to become a 501c3. And then of course it's still only for the United States. So, um, yeah. I don't know. It, it'd be cool to do it in the future for sure, but it uh, there's a bunch of overhead to do it, essentially. Yeah, a lot of accounting and other stuff that nobody likes to do. Yeah. It, it will be interesting. It will be interesting. 
All right. Um, I do see surveys a lot in, in the audience, and he is writing currently something in the chat. Dude, please come up, mm -hmm. jump on the stage. We need to talk, and you want to say something, right? Hey, Sir Rapes, lo lovely to have you here on stage. Howdy, howdy. I had to turn my mic on. Sorry about that. Huh, we can How are you guys doing? Clear. Nice. How are you guys doing? Great. Dude, I'm having the time of my life. This is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? Aren't we all? <laughs> well, I mean, the only thing I had uh, was just an update to the website. Uh, let me go back to what I sent to one clue. Yeah, so basically <laughs> we <laughs> now do have a update to the website opensourceminers.org, which does feature a couple of changes. Now, uh, it will include all town halls and videos for that, as well as all these BitX 101 videos, which are specifically about BitX, and it is this sort of series from the start, how the history of the BitX device has come together, to how can you fix your BitX device, to how can you flash it, how can you modify it, how can you order your own PCB and sort it on your own. All these sorts of things are covered in BitX 101, and I do plenty more about the BitX 101 series. It is by far not ending, but uh, it takes time. Uh, as well as now on opensourceminers.org, there is the bug bounty program including, as well as the funding page. And uh, yeah, I, I think you wanted to point out a couple of bugs, right? Uh, yeah, there are just a couple of bugs because I switched it over uh, basically to the old design because it's a lot easier just to organize everything with that one. Uh, so that's pretty much the only reason. But uh, in doing the switch over, there's some bugs that I ran into, namely the uh, store page for the OSMU uh, merch store at the clothes for some reason. I upload the, the HTML code and it's you know in black text and everything, but whenever it gets to the website, it turns white. So yeah. it's white on white. <laughs> uh, so that's a bug right now. And then uh, some of the navigation menus, uh, namely like the bit axe, like whenever you go to featured projects, uh, and then like you know bit axe. Normally there should be a drop down menu within that drop down menu for the different ASIC versions, like the one three six six, one three nine seven. That's you know, uh, that stuff. But for some reason that drop down menu is not working right now. So, uh, but everything is switched back over uh, to where it is mostly operable, and it includes links to you know everything that you would need from us for you know funding. Like if you look for you know OSME grants. Uh, donations. You have a donation QR code right on the front page, as well as a Discord uh, little, I don't even know, Discord bot, I guess, uh, just to show who's online, and you can join it from there as well. So, uh, but that's all the updates I have for it. Uh, just uh, you know, getting everything a little bit more organized and from how it was, and also the mobile support is back. Uh, I don't know if even anybody's looked at the website recently on your phone, but. From the start, it never really worked on mobile. It never had a good, you know, never had good formatting. So switching back to this one, you can actually view it on your phone now. So, and then just a couple of text updates as far as uh, descriptors on the like about us on the homepage. But that's pretty much it. Great, it's man. Are you still doing the uh, the desk mats? Yes, they are in the store. Yes, dude. I. I know this guy, uh, super cool dude. Let's see, he's not in right now, but Mega Wayne. And every time I see him at these conferences, he's like, dude, I love my desk mat. Like he always <laughs> is like going off on like how much he loves the OSMU desk mat. So for those Heck of yeah. you who don't know, uh, Surveys uh, designed some pretty badass OSMU gear. I think there's a couple different things you can get, but like the desk mat is fire. You should definitely check it out. Yeah, it's along the lines of like, uh, you know, like an LTT desk mat, like if you've seen those, like the ones that you can use your mouse and your keyboard on, like the big ones. Uh, there is a small one as well, just like a normal mouse pad, but it's one that has a bunch of pretty cool OSMU stuff on it. Opensourceminers.org, get a desk mat. They, they are worth it, definitely. I, I love my, I use it every day. <laughs> I mean, I even <laughs> use it for every newly recorded video recently, so yeah some uh, oh, very nice. side loaded magic for OSMU in the background while I'm talking about other topics. Obviously Bitcoin. Heck yeah, man. We're not talking about shit coins here. <laughs> well, heck yeah, that's awesome. All right. 
Um, audience, this is your time to shine. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask them now before we leave you in the corner. Um, Solo Satoshi was asking any update on block dev pack. I'm not even sure what oh, that is. I, about the, Does the mean dev the MDK? pack that you have, this uh, block miner. Oh, the, oh, wait, the, the MDK. Oh, MDK. yes. Oh, the MDK. Um, yeah, yeah. I can give a quick, quick update on that. So for those that don't know, uh, Block is building their own ASIC, like the chip. They're also uh, building sort of a development platform around it for minor developers. And uh, it um, it's kind of weird. They, they, you know, they keep saying, like, yes, it's going to be open source. It's not open source yet. But anyways, they sent me one of them, or of the kits. And it's essentially three hash boards that they made uh, using the Intel chip. So this isn't their chip yet. Their chip isn't ready, but uh, it's three uh, S19 form factor hash boards and a control board. And that was all that was in there. So you have to kind of build it yourself from a, um, an S19 chassis. And I did that uh, this last week and got it plugged in. And it, you know, it's, it's nice. Like their firmware is well done. Um, have you gotten the firmware? You know, have you taken a look inside of it? Yeah, I, I, I have. So they haven't sent me the source for the firmware yet. Like every time I talk to them, I'm like, dude, I want the source. Like without the source of any of this stuff, it's just kind of like a, a miner from a couple decades ago, or sorry, a couple of generations ago. Um, you know, it's like, it's like 30 watts per terahash kind of thing. It only, it's like 89 uh, Terra hash for this whole miner. So it's, it's nothing, um, that I would, you know, that anyone would buy and run in a farm. But the exciting thing is that it's a development kit. So it's for developing on, which is something that I quite am interested in doing. So yeah, still waiting for the open source details, but it's cool that they're putting this together. It's cool. They wanted to send me one. Um, I ran it. We have a MDK channel on the, uh, on the OSMU discord. So you can come and check that out if you want to talk about it. They, they've posted uh, a several blog posts and a couple of like informational things with a lot of good photos. You can see the details of how it works. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll keep you updated on, uh, on how it's going. I, I really want to run a single hashboard on its own and do the firmware from a Raspberry Pi. Because actually... I should, you know, one of the cool things about these MDK hash boards is that they're USB connected. Um, so they don't use that big uh, data cable that the ant miners use. It's just USB. So you could, you could in theory, just plug it into a Raspberry Pi or your PC or anything and run it that way, you know, assuming you can get power and cooling, uh, which is right in the neighborhood of some other side projects I've been working on. Uh, like the Addit board and the Ant Hat, which are sort of Raspberry Pi, USB mining type things. So not a whole lot of exciting developments there right now, but I think it's going to be cool. And yeah, uh, yeah I'll it's, keep you posted. It's really good to hear. It's, it's amazing. I'm, I'm freaking out to actually see more about uh, any of these developments on, on the block side. Because we need to get these open source ASICs, man. I yes, we wait. do. We do. And I am on these guys about it. Like, you know, this, this MDK program was sort of pitched as like for people who are interested in developing on our hardware, like this is how you get started in it. So I'm like, yes, sign me up. I want those chips. Um, yes, please. So doing everything I can to make that happen. Great. Great. That's really good to hear. That's really good to hear. Can't wait to, to get more information about this. All right. Um, Speaking about that, we do have one question from Solo Satoshi. Uh, he was asking, can we give quickly a rundown on these screens and how they're supposed to be friction fits? Sure, let's quickly do this. I mean, if you do have predicts recently, probably manufactured by Ben or any of these, <clears throat> any of these other manufacturers, you do have a screen in there and you can pop in or pop off this screen and friction fits it friction fits. I mean, the name is program here. So you just plug it in and it should fit. There's one thing that could happen. If these pins are a little bit loose or if it is, I don't know, not making good contact, it could be that on startup, your display is not actually going on, which is not that bad. Just reset it and make sure that 
the the pins of the screen sit in there really tight and then every everything should be really fine there's another thing these screens are really really cheap they they cost less than a dollar per piece and a couple of them are just broken on delivery that's usual i mean everybody uh, is doing the best to do the due diligence and figure out that as, before this goes to any of these customers it will hopefully be test uh, tested from any of these resellers or manufacturers that is my suspic uh, suspicion about it but i mean i'm not the manufacturer i can't tell um but other than that yeah we, i mean yeah we uh you know with the display we want to make it uh, changeable because like you said it's really cheap you know and it, it has a bit of glass on the top and so it's really easy if you, you can chip the corner which in a lot of cases can cause the whole display to die so we don't want to solder it in necessarily because uh and it would be really difficult to replace it so you know if you've been following this project for a while you know we've had a lot of different uh display connectors um we had a we had an actual socket. It's a four pin connector on the display, and so we had a socket before that kind of made the display stand up really high, and it looked a little goofy. And uh, from a manufacturing standpoint, not ideal. So right now, what we've got is these four holes in the board, and they're if you look at them closely, they're offset from one another. So the four pins they wedge in there. It's a friction fit, and so you know if you uh, and th this is I think you know driving some of our sellers crazy is that you know despite their best efforts to package them when they arrive uh at the you know their final destination it's possible for that display to have worked its way out of the holes a little bit and so it's really important to while the bid x is off to just push that display um header those pins all the way in like it should there's a little piece of black plastic on the back that should be sitting flush on the main bidax circuit board so you can you can push that in all the way uh it's also important that you know if the display if the bidax is powered up and you reseat the display it won't turn back on uh you have to power cycle the whole bidax in order to turn the display back on so that's why i say you know turn it off make sure the display is fully seated and then turn it back on and you know, I've been talking with Ben and Solo Satoshi about other options here. Uh, we, we would like to make this experience better. Uh, you know, always improving on it. And of course, listening to your suggestions. And if you don't like the screen at all, just pop it off because the BitX doesn't need the display. It can totally function without the display. Yes, that's right. I had a, a friend that bought a BitX and he was like, he messaged me later. He's like, dude, I don't know how this happened, but I drove over the display with my car. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, that sucks. I don't know how you did that. But um, luckily he didn't drive over the bid axe as well. Uh, but, you know, he's just running it without the display. So that can work. And then, of course, you can also get one, like a pack of like five of them for, you know, five bucks on on Amazon. So, uh, yeah, these are know, the ones you're really cheap. You're breaking lots of them. You can you can get a five pack. All right, that, that, that was lovely. Um, we're sitting here over one hour and three minutes currently. As I said, audience, it's your time to shine. If there are no any further questions, then we will close this town hall very shortly. Let's see a couple of people are writing in the chat. Let's see Ooh, Mustafa got there. his display broken by a border official. That's rough. That's, that's rough, yeah. I mean, if it is just one display, probably be replaceable as uh, sen is writing something uh the recommendation for the hex is a bab um for those of you who don't know what the bab is the bab is the short form for bidx accessory port and if you do want to learn more about bidx in general check out the website osmu.wiki it is a complete wiki that i will try my best to keep up to date every week uh yeah there's plenty to read if you are this type of person who wants to read. And uh, Mustafa wants to come up on stage. Let's do that. Hey, Mustafa, good to have you here. Hey, guys. How are you? I hope everything is fine. Doing good, man. How are you? What's going on? Tell us about your uh, your progress. <laughs> uh, no, no progress at all, actually. There are oh, no. 
<laughs> there are bad news in Turkey. In last week, uh, I mentioned before there is a import limit while you are importing in Turkey. Uh, it was 150 euros, and in last week they reduced import limit to 30 euros. Oh so my God! Right are you now, serious? That is not yeah, cool. It is impossible to like buy Bitex from abroad. And uh, it is impossible to buy some tools to produce, for example, or some uh, components. So, yeah, that, that was it. Like, uh, currently, I am focusing on my personal life. No progress on <laughs> Bitax production. And also, that news come up. And <laughs> there is no way to import Bitax right now. So... Uh, my build, I have four bitexes, and these are probably will be only bitexes in Turkey for now. So what? I mean, obviously, people have to be able to import more than thirty euros worth of stuff to Turkey. Like, do you have to set up a business and pay taxes on it, or what's the? Kind uh... yes, yes. You need like it. It is so expensive. I uh, told this story before. Uh, Bitex uh, uh, borders uh, says that Bitex is a standalone computer, so you need to pay a TRT tax on it. It is BBC equivalent of England, you know, uh, because every computer needs to pay TRT tax, which is television tax basically, and. It is so weird story. Uh, government says that you can watch TRT channel with computers, so you need to pay TRT tax on every computer. And mm -hmm. as a VTX, as a computer, you need to pay television tax for a Dude, if someone could figure out how to watch this television station on their bid axe, <laughs> then yeah, like, maybe, but this is ridiculous, I think. Yeah, it's ridiculous, exactly. Like, they say it's a standalone computer and it's a standalone computer, like, and everything. Like, it is, uh, <laughs> it is a shit show here. So, yeah, that's it, basically. Well, we need to get, we need to load up, um, a boat with bid axes and uh, sail it over to you, right? Just or maybe just all the parts. Shady stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need to produce here, but uh, like, actually, we produced one bid We, uh, I had a partner, uh, electronic engineer, and we produced one. Uh, we uh, ordered some components. Uh, but yeah, like right now we are out of resources, like out of like money, and we are saving some money to uh, buy more components to continue our uh, production. But right now it is kind of paused, like uh, we are just paused for a while. Hmm. Well, keep us posted, uh, you know, let us know if there's anything we can do to help. Um, you know, are, are like bare components subjected to this TV tax? Uh, sorry, I didn't get your question. If you order bare components like ESP32 no, and, no. Chips and resistors and stuff, can you get more no, than 30 then, euros? Or? Uh, no, uh, like then they are components. But if you import whole VTEX, <laughs> it is computer so it shouldn't be a computer while you are importing it yeah whatever it takes to not make it a computer like maybe we could set up some way yeah, they, they, what, you know with with ben we're like checks in, in the chat like what about these do it yourself kits if components are just partially sorted onto it so it is clearly not a finished product what about this yes it's also it also works i guess like uh, I didn't try, so like I don't know. We need to try with border. Actually, there are ways, you know. If we say it is just a like circuit, kind of circuit, and if we make them believe in in a way, then 
it goes borders but uh, like we need to do shady stuff uh, we need to uh, like hide the name because once they see vitax they google it and they look for it and so on so on hmm. okay yeah it's it's gonna be a second story and that's gonna be interesting I mean, it's it's incredibly important to get Bitcoin mining specifically to these places, right? Because they're they're not making it very easy for anyone to do this, and so this is kind of like, I don't know, it's it, it's a cool challenge. Uh, Mustafa, you and I have talked about this a little bit, but I think there would be people who would be interested in funding um, this project. You know, so we can talk about this more later. But like, you know, yeah. if at some point you have the time and we want to go after some funding, I think that. Uh, Mm -hmm. I, I've heard of several groups that would be interested in. I sent, uh, I sent a message to uh, BTC Turk, a CEO of BTC Turk. It is uh, like one of the largest uh, crypto, like Bitcoin exchange. Not just in Turkey, uh, it is one of the biggest in the world. So, like, in sense of volume, I guess. Uh, so I like this guy, Kerem Tibuk. Uh, he is very interested with Bitcoin, like he's CEO of an exchange. And I sent message to him, like, can you sponsor us to produce Vitax and so on? He didn't reply. He he is he was not interested. Uh, but yeah, like I tried to look for some local guys to make it happen but so far uh, there is no result okay okay well you know i'd be happy to talk with you about this more um maybe maybe there's some options I, i've just been talking with uh some people who are working on mining in africa uh there's a lot of interest in in spreading uh bitcoin mining to the african uh continent i think yeah, like I said, I think I think there's some people who might be interested in this. So, you know, when you have time, uh, and if you have interest in working on something like this, um, you know, let sure. me know. I think it'd sure. be pretty Thank cool. You. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right, with with that, I think. Wait, let me quickly check the chat. Uh... Yeah, okay. I, I think there's uh, nothing to add on from the chat. All right. Um, good. We are well above an hour for this town hall. I really appreciate everybody here in the audience. I really appreciate everybody coming here up on stage. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for listening to this later on, if you're listening to the recording. Until then, we will see us back again in two weeks. Thanks for being here.